Michael, thank you for joining us uh, for the for the for the session. And um, I do want to get into transformative first steps in AI because I think there's, uh, as we've seen, a, a, a sort of a, a wide spectrum here in the audience of, of folks who are you know at varying stages of AI adoption and understanding of what it's going to take to truly uh, incorporate that into their organizations. But uh, before we dive into that, would love uh, for you to introduce yourself to the audience and just uh, share a bit of your background and what you've been up to at Mondelez. Okay. Well, first of all, hello. I'm Michael Lampert from Mondelez. Um, and I just wanted to say thank you to Brand Innovators for inviting me and for Publicis Sapien, from Michael and Vito, and all the other people from Brand Innovators, for everyone for showing up. Um, I do think it's an important uh, conversation. Uh, my background isn't super exciting. I spent 25 years at the agencies uh, in Boston and New York. I joined Mondelez about four years ago um, out in East Hanover, New Jersey. Um, thankfully, I live in Livingston, so it's close to the office. Um, everybody knows Mondelez. Uh, we make Oreo cookies, Cadbury chocolate, Sour Patch Kids, Tate's cookies, all that other healthy, super fun brands. Um, and I got brought in about four years ago. My boss, John Halverson, um, had spent years trying to fix and elevate our creative and media practices and then decided that he wanted to take a stab at the data and tech stuff. And I had been fortunate over the years to manage a lot of you know, technology projects and implementation at the agency. So I got brought in to help manage our consumer data uh, platform globally. Um, and now recently, um, they let me take a stab at this Gen AI thing. Um, so that's basically the, the gig now. Awesome, awesome. Well, uh, speaking of taking a stab at Gen AI, uh, uh, throughout the conversations we've had over the last two days, we've heard a lot about just the pace of innovation, right? Um, and, and continued and accelerating pace going forward, uh, as well as the breadth of, of use cases that AI can help uh, marketers, marketers address and utilize. Um, but also we've heard that building those AI tools uh, and getting them to work for marketers and enterprises at scale is really challenging. Uh, it, can, it can require painstaking work, uh, involves making a number of educated bets on where the future is going. Uh, and so while that can be a recipe for paralysis for some, of where do you get started, um, we also know that there's a bigger risk in just not taking any steps at all. So uh, uh, would love to hear from you how, how you see this dynamic and how this dynamic maybe has played out uh, in your organization and anything you can share about how Mondelez is approaching Gen AI. Yeah, I mean, I'm happy to share. And I think um, it's been the hardest project that I've worked on in 30 years. Um, and I think the hard, part of the foundational complexity in it, besides the complexity, is that you're dealing with something that isn't fully baked. Tons of pitfalls, tons of fires, tons of, well, what if this happens? Or what if that happens? And when you deal with emerging technology at the foundation, you have the ability for things to go wrong. And, you know, my bosses, John and Jennifer are and the CMO, we decided that we were going to take a stand and that we were going to find a way to make this work, knowing full well that we might spend too much money, we might waste a little money, it might take longer than we thought. But we fundamentally believe that generative AI is the future of marketing. Now it sounds like a buzzword, but where I work, that's a big statement. And then if you add that to the foundation of my, the other half of my job, which is that consumer data is something that we see as an enterprise asset. And we've been investing in that capability for three or four years and investing millions in that. This is the next logical step. So we decided that we would, because Mondelez, even though we're a big giant global CPG, Everything we do has an ROI attached to it, even the Super Bowl. So for us, everything has to be rooted in problem statement, use case, business case. Make the business case, the idea most of the time will get fully funded and fully supported, but that process has taken us a year. And I had a conversation with the CMO this morning and just one more check about the cost, one more check about the capability, one more, what if this happens? And I think you have to be willing as an organization and as an enterprise to be happy with getting a B on the test. Because if you wait for everything to be perfect, 
so you can get an A, you will be two years behind. And that we're making a big bet. We're supporting it internally. Our partners at the agencies, um, Pulis is certainly being one of them, is helping us activate the vision. And it's not always sexy. I hear people talk about use cases and we're, we're coming at this from a consultant-based mindset of business cases and ROI globally. How generative AI will impact the US Oreo business versus the Brazil Oreo business is two completely different business cases. So that's, I guess, a long way of saying that if you have the stomach for complexity and the stomach for failure and the stomach for expense, there's no better space to work in because eventually we won't have a choice. This is the future of marketing. And it just is about how the brands and the teams and the agencies are going to bring it in because pushing it away is impossible. It's too late now. It's a, it's a really great summary and, and obviously a lot to unpack there. I, Going back to the certainty piece, uh, I'm wondering if you can speak to some of the early proof points that gave you and your leadership team the confidence that this is the future of marketing. I mean, it's really hard. So we try to always figure out, even though we're a complex brand with you know hundreds of brands and 100,000 employees and God knows how many countries, we try to always figure out what is the most common use case to the most brands and BUs. And if you can do that and you can attach those use cases, it's now easier to start talking about the business cases and the forecast and the value. So what we did is we looked at what is available for the technology now. Now we know, for example, that full production video isn't really available at scale. And for a brand, brands that spend about 80% of their budget on video, you would think that would be a limitation. And it is, but we're not going to sit around and wait two years for video assets to be, and video capability to be fully realized. So simply, we found three use cases that were ready to go now. And we pick things that are impactful, like how can you use the technology to bring e-commerce faster to market? That's one use case. How can you use the technology to produce better, faster assets at scale? We have brands that spend a ton of money on production and it eats into working media. We fundamentally believe that the technology now will allow us to build and activate assets faster using generative AI. And we also believe there's a use case around how you can pre-test creative in a faster way, cheaper than you can now with synthetic audiences and within the different you know, capabilities. So for us, it's always going to be about efficiency and effectiveness. And then what comes off of that, which is usually production, speed to market, and pre-testing of creative. That makes a lot of sense. Uh, on the topic of ROI, and when we connected uh, previously, you said there, there were a lot of hurdles to jump through and a lot of analysis to do against a very fastly moving target of where, what is the future going to look like in 25, 26, et cetera. I'm curious if you could talk to sort of the approach that you took uh, to drive enough comfort in, in those estimates. I got beat up bad this morning, so it's not really a ton so of comfort. Sorry, yeah, sorry for not me. really a ton of comfort. I got beat up again. Um, but for us, yeah, we are ROI first. And I am on the hook with a ton of others for a significant capital investment globally for this. And one thing I learned as an old, you know, direct response media buyer for 25 years is that things that cost three times as much don't usually generate three times as much. So you have to figure out what is the math beyond cost. If you can't buy media any cheaper, your efficiency lever is limited. We believe that fundamentally this is an effectiveness play, that we can bring better, more responsive, more effective creative to our consumers in a known one-to-one -one environment versus trying to come up with ways to do it cheaper because the capital investment is extraordinary and the cost of reaching people 
on an individual basis is higher. So the math is not complicated in the sense that the technology and the strategy has to cover all those incremental costs. And we believe that by activating generative AI that we will produce you know, multiple X times ROI than business as usual. And that's rooted in the business case that I talked about earlier. And we believe that, you know, saving money on production and being able to bring more assets to market has an impact on effectiveness that is superior to the cost of implementation. So it's hard because the cost is significant. And to say, you know, you're going to get 2x higher, 3, 4, 5x, that makes the math work. But if it's not realistic, as a math person, it's a bad story. So, well, and there there are a number of foundational in order for that math to work. Uh, one of which is data. And given your role, I'm, I'm sure you, you you've had a front seat to how to think about the role of data in enriching Gen AI models and making sure that you're able to take advantage of that investment. Uh, curious how how what advice you might have for for marketers or organizations here thinking about how to how to get their data house in order to be able to take advantage of ai capabilities that's a, another expensive painful process that can take years thankfully i got to hire uh, my friend leo here to help me uh, do all this with consumer data but we actually fundamentally believe that generative ai is the logical step to an internal consumer data strategy. You know, our brands are fortunate. The CMO once told me during my interview in a pouring rainstorm in Soho that Oreo can put out a tweet right now and get a million people to engage. That's not the win for a brand like Oreo. Getting people to engage, to give us their data is not difficult for the brands to do. We have hundreds of millions of user IDs that we can target. The question is, when someone raises their hand and says, oh, I'm Michael with gray hair and glasses, I'm interested in Oreo, the question ultimately becomes for us, what is the value exchange for giving data to the brand? We believe that generative AI and its capabilities are the enabler to produce a value exchange that increases the consumer's relationship with the brand and helps with effectiveness, what helps with efficiency that ultimately becomes the driver of the math that I'm on the hook for, for this. So for us, it's the technology that enables the data strategy and the content that the technology can enable, we feel is the unlock to the underlying data strategy and the challenge of how do you potentially bring down creative cost and bring down the time it takes to bring creative to market. And we think um, that the technology has done that. We've done a lot of one-off AI campaigns. You can search them, birthday song in India for Cadbury. There's a ton, probably about 50 or 75 that we've activated as one-off brand campaigns. And we've decided that we want to not let it be a bunch of one-off brand campaigns all over the place. We want to own our own data. We want everything to be built in our environment. We don't want all of our data being used to, and our assets to train external models. So we could keep going with business as usual and just let the wild, wild west happen and create really cool campaigns that you'll hear about at can. but we're more interested in building something that is ownable for us and scalable to the enterprise, not necessarily winning an award for Cadbury or India or Cadbury UK or Oreo in the US. And how do you think then about, uh, given that partnership you're in with your consumer and looking for them to, to see value in your AI offering uh, and the enhanced marketing it provides with the exchange of data, how, how are you thinking about all the various concerns that consumers may have around privacy and where's this data, how is it gonna be used, et cetera? 
another extremely difficult, non-sexy, expensive. I'm asking in full questions. <laughs> well, this is well. That's I think important. Is everybody thinks this is you know really cool and everybody wants to do it. It's, it's not so cool when Mary the lawyer drags me out in the you know alley of the office and starts yelling at me. But you know, there's something and. There's a consortium that our friends at Publicis and I think Intel and Microsoft have, you know, sponsor called C2PA. And it's a governing body that is really trying to get ahead of content providence and letting consumers know, is what they're seeing Gen AI technology or is it just good old fashioned you know, static creative? And some of you are probably old enough to remember like me, Back in the day when we used to put the little circle blue eye on banners so you could see if your data came from, you know, Blue Kai or Yahoo, that's what we're trying to do is make the consumer feel comfortable with what is happening by being as transparent as possible. And it's not a zero-sum game. Again, things will fall through the cracks and the brand assets will get hijacked and show up on gambling and porn sites and that's how guys like me get beat up. But that's not enough of a deterrent to walk away from the future. And we believe that being out in front on the first brand to partner with the consortium around letting consumers know is what they're seeing generative AI content is the first step as well as being important to the brand because it aligns with our brand and our values and we have to protect the brand constantly. So letting people know that these images are generative AI content, you know, we'll do as much as we can, but we can't be perfect. And that is okay with us because anybody who's been in this room, I'm sure knows that every emerging technology had its host of privacy problems. What we are doing is being as privacy compliant and as legally compliant. We have extremely rigorous, governance models for anything we do so that any capability always has the, you know, the governance bar underneath it so that we can feel good about what we're, what we're doing to the degree that we can control as much as we can. You know, all of our data that we capture is completely opt-in privacy compliant PII supportive multiple opt-ins, um, and I think that's what we do is just you have to focus on governance and the non-fun parts of this or you just give someone, you know, an excuse to say, I told you so. Hope that. Absolutely. Um, would love to get your thoughts as well on, on the impact. Um, we've talked about consumers and we've talked about data, but as you think about the impact on the organization and, um, you know, to take advantage of and utilize and, and get the value from the investment, you need to drive adoption. You need to have uh, teams and people and a culture uh, perhaps operating differently uh, in the future than, than they have. I was curious how, how you think about um, uh, driving that adoption and navigating some of perhaps the pitfalls inherent in that. Another great question. Challenge number five that makes this very challenging. You know, we got to I got to hire someone like my friend Leo here because back in the day, people at the brands would just immediately go to other brands or the agency to hire people. Did a lot of me buying, a lot of analytics, a lot of insights, and we would just hire people from other brand, other CPGs or the agencies. What we've realized now as an enterprise is there is an, an entire work stream as important as the technology is the ways of working and the people and the training. If you get that wrong, then nothing will happen. So with our friends at the consultants agencies and our friends at Publicis, we have created an entire ways of working model that says, in order to do this, we have to invest in these type of people moving forward. And for people like us, it now, you know, you have to start thinking about how do you hire people from Accenture, from Sapien, from Merkel, the people that got into foundational technology activation 10 years ago? Because me going out like I used to when I was the 
one of the bosses at the agency and just, you know, go peach po go poach people from OMD to come work at 360i isn't going to work anymore. And we fundamentally believe that we're going to have to make an investment of tens of millions of dollars in training, ways of working and process and people, because without that, without our partners, that's just another way that the whole thing will fall apart. So we work in a very integrated fashion internally where the CX team that I work on and the MDS team, which is internal IT and INA and legal and finance, we sort of have to travel as a pack because every problem statement that we have to solve isn't ever just one person's problem. So we need to build out our capability to match with the technology partners and the consultants that are helping activate this. So it's an entirely different activation model for hiring, how you onboard people, how you train people, the types of RFPs that we run now used to just be media creative. Now it's Gen AI as a broad umbrella now leads what used to be just an old fashioned media or creative pitch. And it sounds like in addition to training and adopting new ways of working and really rethinking business processes end to end, uh, it's bringing in new skill sets and new, new types of talents, which, uh, you know, onboarding them into your own culture and finding the balance of uh, keeping what's worked and been a source of strength for a very long time with being an, open, uh, an openness to innovate and change and adopt new ways of working. Yeah, I mean, after you know, 25 years at the agency and five years at Monolith, it's kind of it's kind of hard to get something by me that I haven't <laughs> <laughs> haven't seen a few times. But this is the first time in you know my career that we are starting from square one in a level of complexity that has never been seen before. You know, most of the things I was involved in for 20 years were advertising technology, which we thought was super complicated. But now looking back. You know, activating a DSP, activating mobile platforms, activating DMPs is so much easier than what we're trying to do now. And I probably couldn't even have sat here six months ago and spoke about anything because it wasn't done. And I had no past experience to draw from. And it takes a lot to, there aren't that many things in this business that are emerging for the first time. And to try and explain to CFOs and CMOs about, well, when is the video capability going to be ready? Well, I have no idea. It could be 26, could be 29, 28 and a half, but we'll be ready for it when it comes because that use case is sitting there and it's ready and it has a model against it. But again, it gets back to the level of discomfort that you have to have. I mean, think about that. It would be the CMO of Mondelez to say, well, we're a 70% of our media goes to video and you know, full production video isn't a capability that's ready for our level of quality. Why don't you just wait till it is? Or you could take the 25% that's ready now, build the capability capability, build the ways of working, build the business case, build learning in the organization so that you just have to catch up on what's new, not what you have missed three years plus what's new because it would be impossible to catch up. I mean, I've been spending 50% of my time for a year trying to do the easiest part of this. And we have no idea what the activation component for the video assets will be with Gen AI because for our level of complexity, it's not ready yet. So I already know that in two years, I'm going to get beat up because we'll have to go back and redo all the forecasts because a capability will now exist and the business case will have to be made again. A different type of investment, a different type of ROI, a different type of ask and a different type of use case. But we believe that, you know, sort of chopping the tree down over the next three years will keep us ahead. And that's the, that's the hope. I think what you're pointing out, uh, I've lost track of the challenges. There are a lot of challenges. It's tough. These are things that have never been done before. Uh, but 
you you you're talking about I think the um, the sort of bridging from the proof of concept, the excitement of this is going to be game changing to holy crap, this is hard. There's a lot we need to rethink through because this is truly transformative. Um, so to folks in the audience. Um, uh, wondering what what maybe maybe looking at this and saying okay yes these are great things to be mindful of um, what what practical advice do you have Michael on on sort of where to get started and how to get started I mean if it's a brand and you haven't gotten started yet you're in trouble because there's so much to catch up on and I think what you need if you're a brand because that's where it starts I mean the agency can bring whatever they want I brought tons of things that people would tell me to take the elevator downstairs. Um, but I think the brands have to lead this and the brands have to be willing to sign up for the investment, to sign up for the complexity, to agree that this is transformational and that it isn't an option. Uh, not, you don't have to do everything all the time. And listen, maybe we're overestimating it, but we believe that this is generational change for marketing, just like it's generational change for society. And I'm not really here to talk about like, you know, is this gonna take away jobs at the agency? I have no idea. All I know is that we think this is cool. We think it will impact the business. We've put together a model that proves it out and we wanna do it. And if you have the stomach for complexity, cost and patience, you can do this. If you have no stomach for complexity or cost and there will be other things that are easier that you can do instead of this you have to find a way to do both simultaneously and i think that is on the brands to lead it's easy to find a way why this is not going to work or cost too much money or take too long my boss isn't interested in that he's interested in how can we go faster what is ready now? What is the proof? What is the use case? What is the problem statement? So again, I think it's, it's on us. It's on the big brands to help drive this because then it will make it easier, I think, for the, you know, the smaller brands or just the industry in general to, to get on board once people take a risk. We don't see it as that risky because um, we feel good about the math and we feel good about the impact it will have for the consumers and the brands. That's great. Uh, maybe maybe closing question with about a minute left. Um, just looking looking ahead, right? What are some emerging AI technologies or use cases that you believe are going to be game changing uh, for your brands or others? Well, I mean, we have enough we have enough to do right now with the basic capabilities that are available around you know image and text and production capability. But obviously, you know, I don't know what the future will hold three years from now, but. If it's where we think it's going and you can get into full, you know, broadcast quality production tied with creative effectiveness and creative efficiency from production, if we can create broadcast quality assets that can be activated in real time inside of a limitless content library that stores millions of assets, that's what we think the future is. Um, and that the value exchange that the brands can offer through matching emergent technology with consumer needs that tie into what they want from the brand, we think there's limitless upside to doing this. Um, so that's really, you know, my advice is get started, don't be scared, and get ready for some hard days, but fun days. All right. Well, thank you so much, Michael. Well, thank really you for having me. Time.